Have you ever wondered if it's possible with one file, with just one canvas file on Procreate, set it up in a way that you can do something that will work as a print, as a dribble post, as an Instagram post, both 4x5 and square format, all in one canvas? So the question really is, is it possible that with one canvas in Procreate to have all of these formats set up for your next illustration? And that's exactly what we're going to answer in this video. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper, so now let's get to it. All right guys, so quick disclaimer here before we start is that this technique is not perfect. What I'm about to show is not really, really perfect, but is the closest when it comes to being able to create with one artwork, multiple outputs, being able to post on Instagram, Dribbble, making a print file and etc. So let me just show you the file that I've prepared for you for this lesson. It is basically a square file because once you take into account the multiple dimensions that we're going to go through here, actually the best way, the best game plan is to actually go with a bigger square that fits, that actually encompasses all of these different sizes. So in this file that I've prepared for you, uh, you're going to see a couple things. I'm actually going to clean up a little bit more before I actually post it for free for you to download. But basically there is a little caption here on the top left of this file and you will have the 11 by 17 inches print. It's got the four to five Instagram vertical crop. It's got the dribble horizontal, which is uh, curiously enough is actually a horizontal four to five. So it's actually five horizontal four height, whereas the Instagram vertical four by five height. And finally, we have the Instagram square. So they, they are all labeled with colors so that you can guide yourself a little bit more easily once you're looking here on the canvas. So first question is, what is this file? What is the size of this file? So let's just go into the actions menu, go into the canvas section and tap on canvas information. So basically, as you can see here, this file is a 5,100 pixels on both dimensions, on both directions. So it is a big square at 300 DPI, which holds the quality for printing. The print size here, which is the biggest print that you'll be able to make with this file, is going to be the standard 11 by 17 inches print, the vertical poster. Or if you wanted to, or if you want to, you can make a 17 by 17 inches print as a square. So really the print size here is what's driving this file, what's driving the size of this file. With that, you're going to get about, uh, I believe maximum layers, I think it was 17, but now it's saying 16, but in any case, I believe you get around 16, 17 layers maximum to work with this file on an iPad Pro second generation. I do not own the latest iPad Pro biggest size, 12.9 inches, but, and I do know that you get about 30% more layers here, but in this version of the iPad, I do get about 16 layers. So with that, you know, everything comes with a price. So by being more organized in a way that you can export multiple outputs, you'll be able, you'll have to actually lose quite a few layers here, but if you are indeed organized with your layers, this will not be a problem for you. Or maybe you work on a separate file and you're able to bring in parts here. It really depends on your production. So now let me show you what you can do with existing illustrations, which may be, may be a little bit more tricky than of course starting fresh here, planning your illustration from the get-go. So I'm going to show you what I've done with one of my previous illustrations. I brought that in. And I've, uh, when I've made this illustration, I did make it for Dribbble, mostly thinking of Dribbble in mind. Dribbble, coincidentally, is the size of this iPad, actually respects the four by five um, kind of crop, but in a horizontal way. So it is the same as pretty much the size or the aspect ratio of the iPad Pro 12.9 inches. So I've brought the illustration in and as you can see, there's a lot of space here on the borders, on the outside edges, because they didn't plan the illustration to actually accommodate all of these croppings. So I just made a bottom layer with the same color as my uh, background. And now filling that in, I have, you know, a bit of a sense here of what I can do with the different croppings. I'm also going to provide this file with these um, white bars here, they're named by each layer. So this one is the 11 by 17 print safe. And that is just kind of a preview so that you can see what you'll see once you bring in this illustration into the proper file. So this file right here is the big square template 
and you will have to export this, which I'll do it right now so you'll understand what I'm talking about. And I'm just gonna do with the lines so that you have even a better understanding if you are going to stay the whole time in Procreate because you could, uh, for example, you could just export this uh, as a high quality image, bring into Photoshop for the last part, but let's just stay in Procreate here. So I'm just going to click uh, or tap share, PNG, it's going to do its thing and we're just gonna tap copy. And now I'm going to go back into my gallery and I'm gonna open this file. And this file right here, going to canvas, canvas information is a 11 by 17 inches with 300 dpi. So now I'm just gonna go back into the actions menu, but now we're gonna go into add because we just copied that image into the memory of the iPad. We're gonna tap paste. And now we have pasted the illustration into the canvas. But notice something really interesting. It's actually pasting a little bit smaller than what it should be. So we're going to rest our pencil onto the table tap the little arrow with one hand and with the other hand, we're gonna zoom out because the reason for that is so that if I do it like this, I'm actually with the hand gestures, procreate things that you actually want to change things. And in fact, we just want to zoom out. So now I'm just going to use the skill tool if I can, I'm just gonna actually go to free form, see if that helps and it does. And we just need to scale this so that we get to the edges of the vertical section here. And that's basically putting the illustration back to what we actually did, what we planned for in the previous file. So now I'm just gonna tap on the arrow here to commit to these changes. And that's basically bringing your illustration into a new file with that proper size, with a size of 11 by 17 inches. Of course, it's coming with these guidelines and that's not what we want to do, but I just did it in this way so that you could see it and understand what you have to do, of course, you're going to turn off these guides and paste your illustration on a new file. And that that is the final step before you export. So basically, just to go back into the master file or the master crop here, this always comes with a cost. Basically, the cost is, as you can see in this illustration, if I were, for example, I'm just going to turn on the dribble safe. If I turn off or turn on the dribble safe here, you'll see that we actually still have quite a bit of a space here on the sides and the illustration is already done. It's already placed here on the canvas. So if I do any kind of a scaling, I'm going to be adding aliasing to the quality. I'm going to be losing quality of the image. So that the reason why I'm saying that this comes with a price is that yes, when you post it on dribble, you will have bigger gaps on the sides, but the upper or, or the, you know, the pro about this technique is that you're going to have multiple exports. So you're going to be able to post it on Dribbble, to work on your social media on Instagram by instant, instantly exporting this as a square and even posting this maybe on Society6 as a poster. So this allows you, you know, more freedom to post on different sites and be able to work on your art on multiple sites than to be uh, making an artwork that only works for one kind of uh, post. So to give you another example, I'm just gonna turn off this illustration. I'm gonna leave the guides for now and turn off our safe so that we can see everything. I'm going to go back into gallery mode and I'm gonna get this illustration right here, which is a, a very different from, uh, you know, this is more on the uh, kind of stylized but not as graphical as the stuff that I usually make. We're going to copy this illustration and I'm going to go back into gallery and back into our master file. And now I'm just going to paste that. So how do we paste things? Once again, we go back into the actions menu, then paste. And uh, once again, I'm gonna rest the pencil onto the table, kind of zoom out. And now I'm just going to scale that up just a little bit. I'm gonna go back to free form so there is no uh, snapping like what Procreate's doing. And now committing this, I'm just going to bring this underneath my crop helpers so that I can see all the lines. So the first question you may ask is, why didn't I just scale this all the way up? Which I could have done, but as you can see, by doing this, I'm actually for the Instagram crop, which I'll just turn this on, the Instagram square. I have the face like really, really big and it kind of looks a bit strange as an Instagram post. So you also have to think about design, of course, and composition and all that stuff. 
So I'm just going to turn uh, or to undo these actions and turn off the safe uh, Instagram safe. And now keeping like this, what I will actually probably do is something in a rudimentary way because Photoshop will do this way better, which is the content aware fill. But we're going to do a selection as a rectangle. We're going to capture just a little bit of the background. And also, of course, the reason why I'm doing all this is this background, as you can see, is not an instant one fill color. Otherwise, I would, of course, just fill it with one color. So now I'm going to go back into the transform and I'm going to just scale this horizontally, pushing it to the sides. And because this is kind of like um, a bit of a cloudy background, it's not going to be that noticeable. So it's a bit of a tweak, but it does work. So we're going to do the same on this side right here. I think I just went a little bit too close to the shoulder of the character. So something like this, back into the transform menu and push it out. So now we've actually expanded the illustration a little bit to the sides. And now going back into the Instagram square safe, you can see that it already looks a little bit better, or quite a bit better actually. And that doesn't mean that you can, that you cannot tweak things before you export. So in this case here, if I'm just doing Instagram, of course I can bring this up just a little bit and then export without the white borders and without the crop helpers. And once you export this into a new file and you recenter this, you won't have this white bar here because really turning back on the crop, we're really just concentrating on this. Another thing that you can do here, uh, it's going to affect the file. So I wouldn't really recommend it. You could go back into the actions menu here into the canvas and then use the crop and resize section in order to just get what you want back or, or right into this file so that you don't have to actually paste into a new file if that makes sense. You can do that but what I would, would really re uh, highly recommend you is to make a copy beforehand of course because any changes like that cropping and doing things and then going back into gallery it's going to save in this file forever and you're going to lose this master file. So I hope that kind of helps you guys in summarizing what this file can do for you. It's basically a way to optimize the way that you work so that you can export multiple outputs with four different sites, different social media sites, and uh, being able to be very productive with each illustration that you make here on Procreate. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews and speed paint videos and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now on the right side of the screen right here there's more content for you guys to expand your skills in Procreate and other illustration apps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.